because there are a few questions that are needed to respond to as well. The, it is now clear that the uh, IPSE digit of the petitioners uh, on the question of compliance and non-compliance of the Constitution is now sound. And clearly Articles 81 and 86 uh, are in question on compliance. The respondents, my lords, have put up the first respondents, the second respondents, have put up a self-righteous and pompous response on the question of the role of the chairman. And I want to just respond in this manner, my lords. Section 5 of the IBC Act defines what a commission is. And a commission is defined to include the chairman of the IBC and the members. That definition, my lords, contrary to the submissions by Mr. Karori, Senior Counsel, does not include and expressly excludes the staff of the Commission. It cannot therefore lie in the mouth of Council to submit that the verification and the telling of the results of the presidential elections, insofar as Form 34As and 34Bs were concerned, was done by the staff and excluded the Commission who were confined to other duties. My Lord, that was a violation and an infraction that expressly went against the requirements of Article 138.3c. Secondly, my Lords, the submissions by learned friend, Senior Counsel, Professor Gidu Megai, on the executive status of the chairman of the IBC, I think should be taken with a pinch of salt. Because Article 249.1 of the Constitution does not contemplate an imperial chairman who is all-fearing with fear, favor, fervor, and fiat. That is not the chairman that we have. The chairman of the IBC appointed under Article 250, sub Article 4 of, the, 4 of the Constitution, must be that chairman who is a first amongst equals, just like the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, a primus inter pares who must work with his colleagues to guide the affairs of the Commission. I urge the Court, therefore, to decline an invitation by Professor Gidu Migai that the chairman of the IBC is in a special position, different from the four commissioners who are crying aloud to be heard by this court. And my lords, this petition, petition number five, has consolidated. Therefore, tilts on the violation of Article 138.3c. It tilts on that violation. And that violation alone, my lord, therefore invites this court to look at or to turn to Articles 23 of the Constitution on your role as a court to interpret the Constitution in a manner that goes beyond just protecting human rights, my lords, but to look at the, what would guide your interpretation, the holistic approach, the purposive approach, and let me borrow my learned friend's approach, the Antonin Scalia's approach, the late judge of the U.S. Supreme Court, the textual and the contextual approach. And if you apply those approaches, my lord, then you will find that the chairman of the IBC, in failing to properly construe his role under 138.3c and 138.4, violated the constitution and an unconstitutional process therefore emerged that cannot put into place, my Lord, a process that violates Article 3.2. My Lords, there is an invitation to you to invalidate the entire process. And that is why, in answering, my learned, uh, the, sorry, in answering the Supreme Court judge's question that was directed at me on remedies, I wish to state that 
and this is because this court also has a purpose under Section 3 of the Supreme Court Act. And given that you're an election court under 84, in an ideal situation where you are construing Section 83 of the Elections Act, which must be interpreted disjunctively, because if there's an unconstitutional act, then the election cannot stand. If quantitatively, as we shall demonstrate, there is non-compliance again, you love to invalidate the election. But my Lord, in an ideal situation where you would have been called upon to apply Article 232 on public service and Article 201 on public finance, you would have ordered a recount and then secured a winner. But this would only have been possible if there were no unconstitutional if infractions that, 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 that undermine the process and therefore make it unconstitutional. Because this is no longer about tallying and verification. It is about the bigger process of the involvement of commissioners and a split commission. And the only remedy available, my lords, Justice Ouko, the Chief Justice and members of the court, is a nullification. This is no longer the baby of Raila Amolo Dinga V. This is no longer the baby of William Samoe Ruto, doctor, the first respondent. This is the baby of Wanjiko. It is the baby of Kenyans. Return this baby to Kenyans to determine to whom they shall hand over the baby after 60 days. I pray that you nullify the election. And I will cede my time now to Mr. Uh, Senator uh, of Busia County, uh, uh, Okeo Mtata, the perennial litigant. Thank you. <laughs> Distinguished me honorable members of this court,